Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate Campbell, question for you. Do you, when you drink water, do you reuse the, the pump water bottle or the Mount Franklin or whatever it is that you're drinking out of? Yeah, I mean, I've been reusing this one for months and I've been told it's not good to reuse plastic bottles because you start to digest the bottle, but uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm still going I've, with it. Yeah, I've heard something similar. If you use the bottle too much, it can actually release something. I don't know. Maybe one of our listeners can write in and tell us what actually happens if you continue to use one of those dis- disposable water bottles for too long. Yeah, really no, interesting. I, I bought a nice aluminium one to help save the environment, you know, but it keeps going smelly. Oh, jeez. So, I don't know. You just need to clean it. Yeah. Or you just need to drink it to the bottom. No, I soaked it in bicarb and it only lasts for like two weeks before I have to clean it again. And I'm too lazy. Yeah. Come on, save the environment. All right. Speaking of environment, we're going to try and eliminate some of that paperwork that people get from uh, their investing So whether you're investing in ETFs, managed funds, or you're in shares, or who knows what you're investing in, chances are there's going to be some paperwork that comes with it. Chances are you're going to underestimate how much there is. So we're going to try and help you save the environment and save some headaches along the way. And this episode is all about share registry. So we're going to try and keep it nice and tight, really concise podcast episode on what a share registry is, what are the different things that go into a share registry? Why do you need one? What do you do with it if you want to do DRPs? We're going to share our screen, show you what they look like when you actually go into one. And um, basically just all of the admin stuff, which we kind of just let go until now on the podcast series. Yeah. So Kate, tell me, what is a share registry? Okay. So when a company lists on the Australian Stock Exchange, there's a lot of administration when you have thousands, if not millions of shareholders. Think of, let's think of like a huge company like BHP or Telstra. Across their whole investor base, they've got millions of people investing in that company. And that involves a lot of work, keeping people's details up to date, paying them dividends, um, contacting them about annual meetings, uh, if there's an issue to vote on. And so the company wants to focus on what it does best, mining or providing you with some standard of internet. And so they sort of outsource a lot of this administration when it comes to their shareholders to a share registry. And so in Australia, there are a number of share registries and the big ones that we'll talk about today include computer share, uh, link market services and boardroom. And what this share registry does is look after all of the shareholder administration side of things so the company doesn't have to worry about. And the company pays a, pays a fee for this service as well. And the share registry, so when you buy a share or an ETF, you'll, have, you'll receive some paperwork in the mail and that'll start the whole process of setting up your account with a share registry, which we'll dive into in today's episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's all kind of like admin stuff. So, yeah. so uh, if I have a broker, why do I need the share registry? Like if I've got Comsec or Selfwell stake, why do I need the share registry? Yeah. So when you're paid a dividend, when a company has an annual general meeting, it's not Comsec or Perler or Selfwell's problem to deal with that. It's actually the company and they use the share registry to help with that. So When you're receiving a dividend, you're receiving it from the company that uses the share registry to sort of administer that process. So, yeah, so I I had a question the other day and someone was like, well, why can't I just use one share registry? Why can't I have all my shares and ETFs in one registry? And do I actually need to use the registry? And I mean, you can kind of survive without setting up your share registry account, but as you go on through your investing journey, you start to realize that maybe you're missing things or your tax file number hasn't been provided. And suddenly you're getting a statement saying $3 of tax has been withheld. 
And so the company itself actually chooses the share registry. So you don't get to go, hey, I'm going to have all of my shares and ETFs in computer share. So I'm, Owen's going to, I think, screen share sh shortly, but um, the company will actually decide, hey, we're going to use computer share as our share registry. And so you'll be able to find these details um, through a statement. So when you first buy a, a company or an ETF, you'll probably receive a letter in the mail saying, welcome, brand new ETF shareholder. Um, please set up your share registry account on computer share or link market services. And you'll have a ability to register now. Mm -hmm. I think it's come a long way in the last few years. It used to be quite complicated, but so putting things like your holder identification number. So if you have a, an account with Comsec or Perla, you're going to receive a, a holder identification number. And that's the number that all of your ETFs and shares you purchase through that broker are held under. And your postcode, so it, that's another thing. You have to keep your address details up to date. And then you could also put in the um, BHP or A200 or whatever you own and go through the process of setting up your account. The, the thing is here, so um, you have to make sure your tax file number, your TFN is recorded with your broker. So if you're with Comsec or whatever, but it also should be recorded with the share registry because sometimes it doesn't pass across. Mm -hmm. So you need to be really careful. You, you want to have it definitely with the share registry and definitely with the broker. Um, just one of the things that you'll know, if you go into, if you buy a share, you'll get a statement in the mail. Now, that statement will either have an X on the statement. So have a big X and then a number. That would mean that your um, your shares are held on HIN, holder identification number. Keep that number a secret. Don't go and give that out because as you can see on the screen in front of us here, if you give that out, uh, someone else might be able to get into your uh, shareholding if they know your you know, postcode and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the other thing is if it may have an I. So you may have, instead of an X, you have an I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever the number is. And that would be a shareholder reference number. So that's when um, it's issuer sponsored. So it's slightly different. And so you need those numbers to get in here. As you can see on my screen, for those of you who are watching, for those of you who aren't, I'm just on the, um, the individual option. So like this is to register, to create an account on computer share. We can do the same here on link market services. So we would you know, share login. One thing I had to do for my father in all the other day is he had shares that were under the company that he works for is actually on the stock exchange and he got options, which turned into shares and he wanted to know how he could sell them. He would log in here on in link market services. Um, and then from there, he would be actually able to sell the shares um, just because it's like a single parcel um, or he could manage his shares from there. So if you are in a business like that, you can actually find out who the share registry is and use the information that you get emailed or sent from your HR team or wherever it comes and, and pop it in. So here we go. We've got on the link screen, we've got a chance to log in as a single holding. So if you only have one holding, for example, if you have like a beta shares ETF, I believe beta shares, I'm just going to jump onto, yeah, beta shares uses link market services. I think Vanguard might use computer share. Um, you can find out all that stuff um, by going to the ASX website. So ASX A200 sx.com.au and that's a really important starting point because if you're trying to uh if you're on the wrong share registry for the etf or share that you it have work. it it won't come up and so yes type in go to the asx website type in the company code and then if you keep scrolling down to the about section um so you've got a whole share registry section and it will say um, you can probably just do control F to search for share registry on the ASX website. And then it will come up with link market services, computer share boardroom, or if it's a smaller company listed, it could be registry direct or automic. There's a few other smaller players as well. Yeah. We've actually, I did put this information on our best ETFs website when we built it. So you can find where all of the ETFs have their share registry, and then you can click through and you can learn more about that. Yeah. Um, probably don't need to do that right now, mm. but back, but, back yeah. to, yeah. The ASX website is usually the easiest place to find which share registry. Otherwise it might be in the letter you get in the mail, the annual report in the investor center. It would definitely be in the annual report. Yeah, on definitely the in the annual website. report. Yeah, yeah. On, the on the company's website, some companies and ETFs, if you go to their website, they basically all they have is just say, go to the share registry or go to the ASX for announcements. They really keep it kind of simple. Um, here we go with boardroom as well. 
you can you can log in um, if you're an investor you can log in here you can register and you can um, and log in as an employee so Kate what are the types of things that you would want to go online and do with it with a, um, a share registry like what are some of the common examples of things or actions that you'd want to complete mm -hmm. the first one and this is the most important is to make sure your tax file number is recorded via the share registry as well and this will if you have multiple ETFs and shares, you may have to have an account with computer share and link market services and boardroom. So keep those logins safe and then actually go and put your tax file number down and make sure um, there's a certain section where you can see your holdings and you can make sure that your tax file number is recorded against every or they'll, they'll say something like quoted. Your TFN is being quoted against every single ETF or share. And that means that if they pay a, a dividend or a distribution to you, they won't have to withhold tax, which you then have to remember to include if you do your tax return, which just adds a bit of administration to things. So you'd rather just get your full dividend or distribution up front and not have any tax withheld. Yep. So we've got tax withheld. Make sure you have that TFN handy. You want to make sure that um, the address that you have in your brokerage account is up to date and it matches all forms of your ID, just in case there are some sort of like things you need to change. The share registry, if you have to call them or your broker will want to know that you have proof of identity and that the, the address is the correct address. Um, and that's obviously important too, when you set up your brokerage account, because you don't want all of your statements going to someone that has your holder identification number on it. Yeah, um, it's, it's so, super important to have the address correct, especially if you ever want to transfer holdings. Um, it's really important that the entity matches the next entity. So like if you have your address slightly incorrect, it is a bit of a hassle to update it. And we started this program by talking about saving the environment. Um, you can, if you're not, if you don't want to receive all that stuff that you get sent by paper, just select the option to receive it all via email because it's so much more convenient. It's instant, no paperwork, no delay. Like if, imagine if you have a, a shareholding and the company is doing a capital raising, you can receive all that documentation online. If you've got an AGM, you can vote on things. You can just do it all online. You don't have to post back some old school form. Um, do, we, do you even own a printer these days, Kate? Do you have one at home? I do. It stopped working the other day and I don't have any ink, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I do need it for study sometimes. But um, yeah, that's really important. And you'll find that under communication preferences. And so you'll be able to choose what information you get via email or via post. And I mean, I'd really encourage you to put most of it via email and even have it automatically funneling to a particular folder in your inbox, because some if you do have a number of holdings, you do get a lot yeah, of it can be annoying. communication. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and the other thing that's really important is updating your bank account details, because yeah. if you are paid a dividend or a distribution, you want to tell them where to actually send that money. You don't want it sent to a bank account that you closed a year ago because it's they might send you an email or a notification that they weren't able to pay your distribution, but after a while they send it to the to the government to hold on to and you have to go through the find my lost funds and it's just a whole process. So make sure you're actually getting the money by the simple thing of keeping your bank account details up to date through the registry. Yep. And the same thing applies for dividend reinvestment plans. I think if you're in computer share, you'd go to your profile, you'd click on D, uh, DRPs or dividend reinvestment plans. And um, not every company offers a DRP, but sometimes there are benefits, which we've talked about in the past, you know, for some licks, there are particular tax benefits. And also for um, some ETFs and um, even some shares, there may be other benefits. Like with some shares, I know that you can sometimes, for example, get a 5% discount on the price. So they say, Instead of sending you the cash as a dividend, we would like to keep the cash and we'll give you a discount and issue you some new shares. And that can be a benefit to you if you're a long-term holder. You still need to record it on your tax return, of course, which we've talked about in the past, but it's a benefit for being a long-term investor just to select that dividend reinvestment plan. And I think this is something that we often talk about on the show, Kate, is a lot of people miss that sooner or later, you may actually want to go to an AGM or you may want to vote on something that's important like ESG or strategy or something or directors. Having your info up to date in advance is super helpful for that. So um, that's great. And uh, most of the, the voting sorry. issues you can actually do directly through the share registry now. They've kind of got, you can like click, I agree or I disagree or whatever the, 
the issue is and you can do it through the registry which makes it easier and you can find all your statements for tax time so they, they usually email these out as well but when your accountant says hey look i need all these statements on the various distributions you've had or the um, sales you've made you can download them all in one spot from the registry as well yep so we've got just in summary we've got your ability to vote you need to find where we'll start at the top you need to find which share registry you have that can be um ascertained or discovered via the asx website or by just going to the company's investor page um you can uh you can use the share registry to update things like your tax information your dividend information receiving documents via email or in the portal rather than from um you know the australia post um you can yeah, as I said, manage dividends, change your bank details, change your address details. But it's important that what you have in your share registry matches your broker and you may need ID, you will need your tax file number and you will need either a holder identification number or a shareholder reference number. So those two things, uh, the, the shareholder reference number or the holder identification number will come on your welcome letter from your share that you've bought, in company, uh, bought shares in or... Um, from your ETF provider or managed fund provider, they typically take a few days to arrive. So just be aware that if you buy shares today, you might not receive that letter for a little while and that's okay. Um, and that's basically, that's basically share registries. Is there yeah. anything else? No, I think that the main thing is just make sure that as soon as you start buying shares or ETFs, you set up your account, you keep those details safe. You make sure maybe every half year you go and update that. Um, if you're buying things more regularly than that, then I'd recommend sort of updating more regularly because your TFN might be missed or you might miss a, a dividend. But um, if you're if you're just buying a couple of ETFs and you're a long-term investor, it's probably something you can check in with once a year, once you've got it all set up and you know what you're doing. And it, it doesn't get too much co more complicated. Like once you've explored and you know where all the different sections are, um, I mean, their systems don't change that much year on year. So you'll be you'll be a master of it in no time. Yep. And I'm just going to add one more little tip here for people. You're going to start receiving a lot of emails. You can set up, if you use, for example, Gmail, you can set up a filter. So when you receive that first email from Computer Share, you can create a subfolder in your inbox. And you just say in, in your Gmail app, you say filter messages like these. And then they get sent to your, you could, your, you could go investing admin folder, subfolder, and it sends everything directly there. So you don't get that caught up in all the, you know, you might send in you some, I don't know, whatever via email um, or from all your, like your work communications or, you know, whatever, your personal ASOS deliveries, um, have that in a separate subfolder and it'll just make your life a lot easier. So we've got calendar reminders just to check in with your shareholder, uh, share registry, set up that subfolder just to make your life a little bit easier. Cool. And that just just to like finally reiterate that, that communication preferences, I, I would highly recommend changing it to email because I've seen the sheer amount, like even in my past life working in investment operations, the sheer amount of paperwork, it it's like destroying thousands of forests. And the ASX is hopefully changing that in the next yeah, year there's or new, two. Yeah, there's news of that. So that's big. Yeah. But yeah, I, I get it start, sorted straight away. Change your communication preferences to email because it's just too much paperwork and you don't yep. need most of it via paper. Love it. Great advice, Kate. As always, thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks, Owen.